Hello my friends, my name is Darren from RC Scam Models and today we have another kit, this one's from Edward. This is the 148 scale, appropriate pack edition of the Spitfire Mark 1A. Um, I'm so surprised to see this kit so soon. Uh, being that we've only just recently had the uh, Mark 1 released uh, about a couple of weeks ago, a month now. Um, mm, it is good to see the uh, another Spitfire. I'm I'm never disappointed with uh, Edward Spitfires. They are some of the best out there. Um, who who doesn't like a Spitfire? I think everyone does pretty much. Um, it is nice to see. A nice tall version again of the Mark 1A. There is several ones out there from Tamir and some other people. They do the Mark 1A. Um, this is still pretty much on the Battle of Britain period, 1940s and 41. So uh, the, the slight difference between a, a Mark 1A and a Mark 1, to my understanding, was they upgraded the front windshield to armor plating and there's a couple of changes with the uh, wiring and stuff the, the engine got slightly upgraded and something to do with i think the um they first introduced the uh pitch on the propellers as well was on the mark 1a that wasn't on the mark one that it was on the mark 1a if i'm not mistaken there could be a couple of other changes but that's what i do know of um i do have a reference book which does show you from mark one to the very end and it shows you everything is changed um if you wish to see that i will uh show you that on a separate video but this is the new propia pack edition like i mentioned this is what you get for kit options i do like this one i am interested in building this aircraft i've been trying to find the markings for this aircraft for a long time and now I have these markings, I can I can actually do the aircraft that I want because I think this Spitfire looks pretty cool in the yellow nose instead of the typical Spitfires you see today with the black and the white. Something different with the yellow nose. This is a squadron lead leader of um, Brian J. Lennon. Um, he was from based at Fam Famar. Or fair uh, RF Flow Flowmore fl Flowmore. I'm not sure where that actually is, but um, I think that's in the Midlands somewhere. But it is a famous aircraft as well. That one, most of these are, but this is one I've been wanting to do for a while. Uh, the kit number for this is 82151. will take you down a little bit here's a top opening box it's a typical uh, size for Edward we get your worksheet two sprues decals fellow etch and um, masks there is no resin in this kit so here's your worksheet if you wish to uh, read the history on the uh, Aircraft, pause the video. Again, this is a quite thick booklet, several steps. Your first section. Okay, this is your first section. Uh, you have your sprue map. Uh, mask and follow it. Your colours are done by guns. The colours you will need is red, yellow, silver, flat, white, black, light ghost grey, um, light ghost grey. That's strange. Uh, dark earth, sky, tire black, clear red, clear green, dark green, dark sea grey, medium sea grey, light blue, dark green, duck egg green, aircraft grey, green. Dark iron and aluminum or aluminium for wherever you are in the world. Cockpit halves, two firewalls, adjunct oxygen tanks, 
and some levers back part of this seat assembly uh, your flight stick and your seat typical Spitfire pretty much the same for all Spitfires and how Edouard do theirs once that's assembled you can attach your seat to the uh, cockpit floor instrument assembly with the photo which comes in two halves and attaches to the uh, back plate which is blank you notice there is no red segments in this half to cut off because they do give you the option to have the uh, plastic and you do get a uh, piece of plastic which is blank which is uh, R64 which is blank so you can stick your photo etch to uh, your pedals being replaced I don't see the point of doing that because you're not going to see them anyway adding the seat belts which goes down the, over the uh, seat and then runs through the back of the aircraft and, and attaches to the back very simple um, attaching the uh, dashboard or instrument panel section to the to the uh, cockpit and then sandwiching the two halves together then this segment you've built up here gets attached to your two fuselage halves obviously don't forget to paint the inside of the uh, cockpit green and then the back of the aircraft is silver uh, if you're having the door open you're going to have to cut this trim piece away um, don't forget to add a couple of decals or stuff inside you probably won't see these anyway because if you tuck down the back corner the lower floor or sorry the lower wing segment you need to add the wing spar in which is part of the wheel well as well um, lower wing segment added in your wheel arches once that's all done you can add your guns as well sandwiching the two halves of wings together we have got more bracing as well and wheel well segments at the top here once the wings are together you can drop your fuselage half down don't forget to add your wings and upper stabilizer and uh, aileron um, they're asking the blue part 40 and 41 which are these little little plates but the rest of it looks like you could just slot in and it should be movable I'm not sure looks like you've got clip wings even though it's not because the, the end of the wings are done by a separate piece that's how they get around by the molding on clip wings and everything else by attaching the ends like you see here adding your flaps uh, radiator system going in on the bottom of the aircraft the uh, front chin going in front nose front chin this is the radiator system open or closed on both sides your wheel assembly um, you will have to use plastic that way you get with the kit um, but obviously uh, all the aftermarket out there for this is all done by Edward you can re you can replace pretty much the whole tire cockpit um, wheels you name it it's all out there but this is what you get for plastic wise it's two halves for the uh, caps the uh, wheel assembly is actually one whole piece in the quite simple attaching your wheels leave that to the end your tail dragger attach that to the end but just making sure everything's square because the, the landing gear on the Spitfire is quite narrow and you want to get it not like a uh, 109 where it's like a V shape you want it more tapered uh, cockpit canopy going in you've got little bit of instrument panel piece here which is like a uh, I'm not sure what this piece is but I think it's like a compass type thing uh, the door like I say if you're having it open don't forget to add the uh, lock-in mechanism the front windshield adding the armor plate your aerial going in the propeller system there's two types of propeller you get with this kit uh, this one here and a version which has got a slightly different nose cap or nose cone um, this is the canopy open this is the canopy closed and obviously you've got the door open and the door closed can't have the canopy closed with the door open doesn't doesn't fit 
this is what I was on about with the uh, mark uh, option A, B, C, D and E version of the uh, colour callouts. The uh, wiring is just straight across the back, but it's F and G version is the wiring attached to the wings. Um, canopy mask is pretty simple. Uh, like I say, because there is two types of canopy, but only slight differences. This is for the closed one, and this is for the open one. This first up marking option: Spitfire R six seven zero nine, nineteen forty from Hornchurch. Um, typical uh, RAF green and brown, and then we've got the black and white underside with the black spinner. This option here is from RAF um, can't can't pronounce that word. But again, red and brown for the camouflage and the underside is half white and half black wings, but the actual rest of the uh, body is silver. This one here is from RAF War Mill, 1940, Earth Brown, Earth Green, but the underside is Sky Colour, which is like a uh, light green, minty colour. This one here, RAF Hornchurch, 1940, uh, late August, 1940, Earth Brown, Earth Green, with the Sky underside, again, pretty basic, typical uh, Spitfire colours of uh, Battle Britain. This one here is the one I want to do. It's from RF Fairmail, Fair Fair Mail, if that's how you pronounce it. But September 1940. This is this is squadron leader Brian J. Lennon. Uh, Spitfire P9386. Like I say, because it's got the yellow nose, I think it stands out. It's um Pretty cool looking, I, I find. Again, earth brown, earth green, the sky underside. Last two, we have this one from Hornchurch, February 1941. So this is coming towards the end of the uh, Battle Brink. So I think it lasted only two, three years. And the uh, Germans gave up in the end, trying to uh, conquer us. But they uh, went on to defensive, because we started to do D-Day and stuff. Uh, what have we got on? This one's Hornchurch, I'd say 1941. Earth brown, earth green. The underside is slightly different now. Half wing is black and the rest of it's sky. And then we've got the uh, early version of the one of the first early aircraft to be painted in the uh, dark sea grey and the uh, dark green. With the uh, grey bottom. This is RAF Scamp, wherever that is, September 1941. Stencil data for all aircrafts, um, pretty basic. Um, I'll do these black lines and I recommend doing these ones here on the ends because they are very pronounced and you see them quite easy. These squares as well are quite visible but the rest of it I wouldn't worry so much. We yeah, have canopy mask, laser cut, typical, nothing fancy. Uh, I say you only get the one option to build out of this kit, um, but there is slight differences in the uh, cockpit. That was one of the upgrades. Seat belts, grills, uh, metal seat if you wish to use it. There's nothing else. We have the 2020 decals because I say this is a 2020 kit release new tooling for this year again mentioned before people are having issues with the, with the decals i don't know what the issue is something to do with the carrier film i'm uh, yet to uh, discover that for myself
So we have two decal sheets. We have this one which has your stencil data. Looks pretty good to me. Um, so carry film up on these lines are quite quite chunky. But those red squares are to go over your guns. You can either paint them on or you can use the decals. I think using decals will probably look a bit better because on the real aircraft it was uh, excuse me tape. They uh, quite figured that out quite early. Um, the guns were jamming up with moisture. So a simple design come up with, by just sticking red squares over the front material and it worked by stopping moisture getting into it. Quite a simple uh, fix. We have these markings. Everything seems pretty cool, but some people were saying some else with their decals were slightly grainy effect on the print. Um, I can see that on some of these num letterings. Um, that could be to do with to make the uh, decals not decals, but to make the uh, markings look more aged, like because obviously it's the early aircraft. Could be as well. The carafilm around these letterings are quite chunky. Not thick, but just quite large. Um, but the, the decals look pretty good in colour and in registry. Again, if you look at these um, roundels, I don't know if you can see that on camera, but they look quite blotchy as well. Again, it's probably something to do with making them aged. Or it could be something to do with the carrier film people are complaining about. Um, you can actually fill the decal on this one. But I can't say for sure until I start building it. The kit should go together quite nicely, but the decal problem I can't say until I've actually tackled it for myself. Now we have two bags with four sprues. Um, if you've already looked at the one, uh, the Mark One, um, you pretty much know what the plastic's going to be. It's going to be exactly the same because it is taken from the same moulding. And again, if you built it, you know what what you're in for. You've got a little bit of plastic there. I think that could be just flash. But always be sh sh for sure. Yeah, that's flash, that ain't part of the kit. So this first sprue contains the propeller system. Again, nicely moulded. Nice, clean, crisp moulding. We have the uh, single propeller from the early one, which was not needed. Inserts for the wheel wells, which are needed. There's part of the wing bracing. There's the cockpit, with or without um, photo etch, which is this segment here is for the photo etch. This one is the painted option for the decals. This is all the fine detail parts for the interior cockpit area. Some gun sights, oxygen bottles, bracing for the seat. This is for seat segment. This is a handle for the seat. Here's your flight stick, more trim pieces, it's all cockpit assembly, quite fine detail parts, cockpit floor, here's your cockpit seat, which is here, nicely moulded with the cushion. There's the, the side walls of the uh, cockpit, a little bit of detail on that, but you'll be adding more to it. Uh, what else we need to look at? We have on the earlier kit, people were complaining about the exhaust system having large sink marks into these. These ones don't look too bad. There's a little little bit of sinkage in there, but um, I don't know. These are hollowed out and slide molded, which is a nice touch. But I I could 
put it down to wear and tear because there are early aircraft they're probably going to be beaten to the hell anyway and um, once you put weathering on them and stuff they will probably blend in anyway nicely but they seem okay we do have some cannons but i don't know these are not needed these cannons are for the mark 5 because if you look at the sprue ends uh it does that on here where is it down the bottom mark 1 to mark 5 so at some point we probably are going to get a mark 5 if i'm not mistaken because we have basically have the kit to do a mark 5 here And I think Mark V was one of the uh, first versions to get cannons added. Uh, internal parts. These are the uh, wheels assembly. You've got bald wheels, but basically like plain nothing on them. And you've got one. These wheels have got slight pattern in them. They are molded as one piece, which I do like. Um, I have no problem with them. Here's the flaps. Wings, detail, rivets, nice and crisp and clean. Two halves have to go together. Here's part of the spinner system. Slight noses, but quite narrow. There must be some other ends. Here is another spinner over here. Um, the lower chin looks nicely moulded with rivets and bolts. The wing tips. Uh, we have these segments here, part of the uh, radiator system. The aerials at the top. Uh, these are the inserts for the wheels. Spin you around. That's pretty good for plastic. And the last, last parts are clear and fuselage parts and wings. We have a look at the clear last. So here's your fuselage half. As I say, you only get the one kit in the uh, probably pack edition. So you pick what you wanted to build. Uh, nice detail. Superb quality of Edward. We have mixture of recess and raised rivets on this on this aircraft. So it is a hybrid. It is nicely done. All the way down to the front. These are like Allen key type slots to get the cowling off quickly to get to the engine. Nicely done. We have this one here for some extra propellers and a couple of different seats. This one with cushion and one without, and a different type of spinner which has that line for it. We have the lower wings, this is the inside, real well, pretty good detail. Jet to pins, they're in the places you're not going to see them. Again, surface detail for the outside, lower wing section segments, pretty good. These ports are for the uh, extra shells to shoot out of, nice and crisp and clean. Upper wing segments. Again, a little bit of marbling, that's around the wheel well, but no problems. Once you get some paint on that, it should be no problems at all. But the uh, detail again is pretty pretty good in my opinion, I like it. This is all recessed. And the plastic is nice and smooth. And this in bag we have to clear. Nice clear parts, large amount. So we have 
three types of closed. They look very much the same, but they're not. I don't know if you can see that. Two of them are curved, and this back one is quite flat. We had again. You can see the difference between the uh, those ones curved and the flat canopy for the open. There's another open piece for the back. These pieces. There's two more here. Closed ones again for different variants. This is front windshield with no armor plate. That looks like for the Mark One. This one here where my finger is, is one with the armour plate, I think it's for the Mark 1A we have one here with no armour plating we have some lights and you do notice, you do if, if you are doing a clip wing Spitfire, you do get the clip wings which are moulded in the clear I think Mark 5 again was one of the early ones to get clip wings as well that was quite a few changes they did in the Mark V. Cannons, clip wings, bigger engine, cockpit, glass, you name it. A lot of it was changed. Uh, clip wings was to do with trying to get more speed out of the aircraft and mobility. I'm not sure if it actually worked or not. So there you are my friends. Another Spitfire. Mark 1A. 148 scale from Edward. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you later.